Hello, we are going to get started. Can everybody hear me? I'm trying to project my voice for right now. Everybody can hear me? All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. Where is she at? I don't see her. I'm going to introduce Mona Lisa. Hey, Deborah. But before I do, I want you to touch someone's shoulder. If you can touch someone's shoulder, the person next to you, touch a shoulder. And when I say something, after I say something, I want you to say you are, okay? All right? I can even do this so y'all know to say you are, okay? I'm going to wait till they get the music down so y'all can hear me a little better. No? Because, yeah, the music got to get cut off. I don't know how to cut it off. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. We're going to wait for him to come back so he can turn the music off. But remember, after I say what I say, I want you to say what? You are, right? So I can do this, and I'll do this. Let's practice. You, my name is Amanda. Okay. All right. Amanda, can we just possibly have them turn down the music? Yeah, he's going to turn it up. All right. All right, ready? Empowering. You are. Loved. You are. Strong. You are. Resilient. You are. Mothers for Justice and Equality. Mothers for Justice and Equality. You are. All right, all right. So now we're going to introduce uh, the woman of the hour here. Um, but I'm going to do something, and I'm probably won't. Y'all probably won't see me next year after I do this. Okay. So okay. Thank you. Thank you. I want you all to do this. I don't need the mic for that. On your table in front of you, I want you to just tap on it. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to the podium the founder, the CEO, and the president of Mothers for Justice and Equality, Mona Lisa Smith. I'm just going to not say anything about that right now. <laughs> and we're going to just move on with the program. <laughs> so welcome to um, this Mother's Day luncheon. Um, I have the honor to introduce our mayor, um, Michelle Wu. And she's going to come up and give us some remarks. Um, mayor Michelle Wu um, is the mayor of Boston. She is the daughter of immigrants, um, Boston Public Schools mom of two, um, MBTA commuter, and a fierce believer that we can solve our deepest challenges through building community. So um, I am so honored and proud that she continues to um, join us um, for our Mother's Day luncheon. And without further ado, I introduce you to our mayor, May Wu. Keep it going for Miss Mona Lisa. <laughs> we love you, and we are so grateful for you. Your leadership has completely reshaped Boston, has built community, has strengthened and deepened the roots that are so necessary. Um, and to everyone here, we are, I, you know, even being back here with you all in this space once again, uh, it brings back so many memories for me running around um, with, with my little ones <laughs> on my hip and, and being able to pass them around the room and, and getting to sit here and, and really soak in the power of this room. Um, I get the chance to now, a little over a year and a half, uh, serve in an incredible um, opportunity to, to try to bring all of the resources in our city together. And I'm only here because of the all-star team of folks who agreed to step up and serve in city government in this moment. So I want to recognize and thank our Boston Police Commissioner, Michael Cox, <laughs> whose leadership has already been transformational and who um, knows our communities inside and out, has um, the ties in, in every part of the city and is making sure that the work that we do to keep all of our residents safe is really grounded first and foremost in community. Thank you, Commissioner, for all that you do. I will just, OK, I'm going to brag a little bit here also, uh, because the commission and I share one trait. Um, 
we're not, we're kind of introverts naturally and are now um, in, in a lot of public spaces where we have to, to do some public speaking and he's incredible at it. Um, there is a, you know, Congress is in a, a complicated situation right now in the federal government. There's a lot of back and forth on a lot of different issues. Um, there's a committee that has called a hearing on safety and violence in cities. Um, it is a committee that has really been focused on, I think, trying to push maybe a, a vision of, of cities that's not quite true. Um, the Republicans, as we know, are in charge of that committee at this moment, as, as everyone, um, as every single one of those in the national level. But um, some of our delegation and the Democrats, as part of that hearing, they only get to call one witness. They get to call one person to testify, and they wanted someone who really represents the public safety that we know is possible, that is grounded in community, that's making a difference and making progress. And so the one witness that they're going to call from the entire, across the entire country, is our police commissioner. So he's going down to D.C. to testify next week on that. He's going to represent, represent all of us and represent the work that you all have made possible through your community building. Uh, I also want to thank our um, uh, neighborhood liaison from Mattapan, Mr. Eric James, who is a familiar face to all of you, who is, is part of every convening and making sure this, this community is is uh, has all the resources and attention that uh, that we could possibly give. Uh, we're joined by our my senior advisor for faith initiatives, Will Dickerson, as well. We all know presence here. Um, and of course, our counselor, um, city councilor at large, Ruti Lujen, who is such a strong advocate and partner, who you've also known for a long, long time. Um, you know, Mother's Day is a, a day where we celebrate the power of a mother's love that there's nothing like that in the whole world. And I wanted to be here today as I've had the, the privilege of spending some of this day with you all in years past to just know that, to make sure you know that your mother's power has completely changed the city and, com and made it so that we could all have a, a space where we believe in what is possible. You have experienced what no one should experience. And being a mother and experiencing this, the loss, the grief, the trauma, you have turned your pain into such powerful love for the wider community. And so we stand here just to say thank you, that you are seen and treasured. And um, I just look up to each and every one of you. And I'm, I'm humbled to even be in your presence always, but especially this weekend. We thank you for making sure that the power of a mother's love really covers everyone in our communities and that we won't rest until everyone has the safety, opportunity, health, and joy that we know is possible and, and that everyone deserves. So thank you for your advocacy. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Wolf. For, um, coming out. We appreciate having you here today. And um, he wasn't on the program, but when I saw him, I was so excited because um, I have been trying to meet him. And not to his fault, I just haven't had the opportunity to get to meet our commissioner. And I just want him to share a few words um, with all of us because. Um, I believe that um, that you know he's so connected to us as a community, and some of the things that we are facing um, with our sons and our daughters, and so I wanted to just have him come up and share just a few words. Thank you very much. It's really good to be here, and um, I'm so happy you know, I was invited to come. And I want to say to all of you ladies, Happy Mother's Day tomorrow in advance. Um, thank you for what you do daily, what, what you've been doing for so many years for children, grandchildren, all your relatives, all the people in your family, because in the end, it, you know, we're here for family, and that's what Boston is. It's hopefully one big family, and the police department, and certainly I, want to make sure we support you all in making, you know, both the city safe for all our families, and, um, and making sure that we, uh, 
you know, make this a better world in the city. Uh, I, the police department's been here for a long time, and, and our job is to try to prevent some of this stuff, but the reality is we can't always do that, but the work that you're doing around, you know, you know creating peace in, this, in the streets and in our families and providing, for, um, you know, uh, ways and, and methods for people to get through the issues and problems that they're going through to prevent this stuff from happening in the first place is so vitally important. So anything that I can do as a, you know, as a police commissioner and certainly the police department can do to support you, your group, uh, and, and anybody who's empowering people in the community to you know, stand up and do what they can to try to make this a, a better place the world will live and way more peaceful for all our children. You know, we're here to do that. So um, I, I'm here. You have my information now. I will be here uh, at any event that you have. But please let us know as the police department what you need us to do, what you want us to do to help provide the uh, peace and safety in the community that we all deserve. All right? Good to meet you all. Thank you. I'm so sorry. I um was scanning the room and had already had a conversation with this one more incredible leader in the administration who I forgot. After I had my second child, I don't remember things as well anymore. I have to write them down. Um, Reverend Mark Scott is the director for our trauma response and recovery program uh, based out of the Boston Public Health Commission, but is, is um, the foundation for so much of what we do on the ground. So thank you for your leadership. I apologize for the team. And welcome to Rep Holmes, who came in the room since too. Thank you, Mayor Wu. Yes, we cannot forget Reverend Scott. Mark Scott, um, he is such a friend of MJE. And he does so much with the um, Mass Coalition of Gun um, Violence. And um, you should stand up so everybody can see who, who we're all talking about. <laughs> and, um, and also, um, Mayor Wu mentioned um, State Representative Russell Holmes is here. Um, this is his district, and I just want him to come up and give a few words, and so that people, it's so important that we recognize, um, you know, who is um, representing us. And so I think it's important for you to see his face, know who he is, and hear his words. All right. Thank you so much. I um, have seen some of you even this week um, at some of the uh, events uh, that we've had. We've had a good week from... Uh, celebrating women on yesterday at the State House, and uh, we celebrated some development uh, over at 249 River Street this week. So we've actually had some positive things where I've seen some of you already this week. I just want to come and say, uh, reverberate what the commissioner just said. Um, one of the things I can tell you I have seen and heard that now proliferates throughout uh, B2, B3, and when I go to the meetings is, uh, so often, the police had always just said they're going to be focused just on violent crime. Like, that is going to be what the conversation will be led by, because that's what we feel like it should be led by. Right? It's, even though we continue to hear all across this country how we're very different, uh, there is crime that's going through the roof all across this country, and then here in Boston, we've been uh, really doing well. But even as crime goes down, it is still the murders that catch all of our attention. It's still the unfortunate incidents that pull us out and make us um, drive all of our opinions, quite frankly. What happened on Willowwood, which was just down the street, obviously, just last week, uh, drives all of our attention. And so um, hearing his team now say what is important to you is what's important to them. And when I continue to now hear that through all the CSO offices, uh, that is a very different statement, meaning when you walk into a community room and, yes, we're concerned about violence, but if our number one issue right now is the speeding cars down our street, not having a speed bump, um, whatever the issue is that, they are, that you, we, are yelling about, let's not just skip right over that and say, well, we're here just for the police thing. It has become really something that I want to just thank you for saying that. Um, to your team, because I can tell you now, in each one of the meetings, I was in E18 the other day, and uh, Felicia, uh, um, uh, what, what's the lady's name over there? Um, Lisa, I'm sorry. Um, she was saying that, you know, hey, no one has ever come out to us 
and talk to us about all the bites going up and down American Legion Highway and all up and down Blue Avenue and all of the places that we, I'm like, no, everyone talks about it. So no, actually it is something important, but to have a room then packed with 30, 40, 50 people to then say, hey, here's what we're going to talk about because this is really what our most pressing concern is. What their most pressing concern was, was really just about, hey, how do we stop not being surrounded by bus, uh, by um, bicycles and things of that nature. So it's what's important to us, meaning as a community, that the police need to, uh, to focus on. So now let me just talk about today. Um, when I first was elected in 2010, it was early September. Two weeks later, the person literally from D3 at the time called me and said, hey, rep, come down to the bottom of your hill. Don't drive, walk. Like, why would you walk, want me to walk down to the bottom of my hill? He was calling me to tell me that. He said, I know you're not the state rep yet. I know you're just elected. I know you run on all these different platforms, but come down to the bottom of your hill. And when I got down to the bottom of my hill, literally there were five people in the middle of the street who were gunned down. Obviously, you guys know the story about the mom holding her daughter that was killed. And uh, it was a wake-up call for me immediately, no matter what, all these other things that I wanted to talk about, uh, violence and the impact of family is really what's going to hit us hardest. I had one of the young ladies in that um, event, or one of the young men in that event, was literally the son of someone who I grew up with. And to have to make the phone call to them to say, he's dead, uh, it's just a very difficult call. So Mona Lisa, all of you guys, you have a, a challenge that most of us will never, and we pray never, have to experience. And so you bring a passion and a love uh, to this issue around making sure your families, that horrible incident isn't how our love member is remembered. And I think about Kim and the Odoms and how we're doing the Peace Garden there. All of the things that we do and that you collaborate with is so important about healing the family. Today, that's what this is more about than anything. It's about making sure we take these tragic incidents and not let that, be, let that be the only thing that we remember close by. And so thank you for what you do. Thank you for um, not letting those incidents stop you. I mean, these are the types of things that sometimes destroy families, make them have divorces, stop people in their, in their steps, and make it so that they can't proceed on. But that's not what you guys have done. You have done the opposite, and we're grateful for you. So happy Mother's Day to all of you who are mothers. Thank you all for having me today, and I look forward to being here. Okay, now we're going to take a, a break, and, um, and then we're going to have our lunch. So thank you. We're going to have the mayor, Mona Lisa, and all the, the representatives and the police commissioner, and there was one other person. Come stand right here for a photo. Oh, wow. Closer? Oh, okay. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Thank you, God, for Mothers for Justice and Equality, the mother of all justice. Thank you for the gift of motherhood and for giving us women the privilege of bringing forth light. You have created us with the sacred ability to carry, nurture, and bring forth children who bear your image. Lead us to rely on you and your wisdom in dealing with and overcoming earthly struggles. Protect our hearts and minds from the lies and deceit of the evil one who is out to destroy the high calling of motherhood, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for this food that we are about to eat. May it nourish our bodies to serve you better. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Ladies and gentlemen, bring them back to the podium. Can I hear y'all? Can I hear y'all? Bring them back to the podium. The president.
No words. No words. So, um, so we, we moved the program around a little bit. Um, so lunch is going to be served after, um, after my remarks. Um, so I don't like to be the one standing between you and the food, but the food's not ready. So, so, okay. Um, I wanted to just take a moment before I start and acknowledge MJE staff. So the individuals um, that are um, at, from MJE, if you could please stand so that we can just salute you. All of MJE team, MJE, please stand up. Now, I want you to take a look around at this beautiful, beautiful event. Now, you would think that we had like an event planner. You would think that we, we had somebody come in and do all this beautiful stuff. No. It was these two women, Arielis and Ariane, that put all of this together. So I just want to recognize them, acknowledge them, and say thank you from all of us for your heart that went into this, this beautiful luncheon for the mothers. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I have to introduce our DJ over here. <laughs> Saku, our DJ, he's the director of programs, um, multitasker always willing to just jump in and do things. So thank you, Saku. The music is wonderful. And I wanted to recognize our board members and our peer leaders. There's Eileen. She's board member, peer leader, author. <laughs> if you haven't seen her book, um, we are going to be raffling it off. I don't have a copy up here, but it's, it's in the, um, it's out in the, Oh, it's over here, yes. It is so beautiful. It is a prayer journal. So we're going to raffle off some. Isn't this beautiful? Yeah. It's Eileen. How about that? Look at this picture. Right? This is Eileen. So we're going to raffle some off. And I also want to um, call your attention to our impact report. So I want you to just kind of take some time, take a look at it and really see the work that MJE is doing. I know many of you are in our programs and you're, um, you know, you're on Zoom and these are, some of them are your family advocates, but I do want you to, um, you know, to just see the work that MJE is doing. Um, and also I just want to, um, to just, um, just to say thank you to all of you for coming out today. Um, we're truly appreciative of your friendship and your support um, along the way. So I have, I have the opportunity to um, give you guys a few remarks, right? And so I was thinking about what was I going to talk about today? What could I leave people with thinking about today? And those that know me um, know that I am a reflective writer and I do like to draw on knowledge from all different kinds of books. And one of the books that I read a lot, <coughs> which is a book, right, and it's one of the best sellers, is the Bible. Yes. Right? So it's the Bible. And so I draw on different things out of the Bible that kind of help me and guide me in kind of life. And so one of the things as I was kind of like hanging out with my sisters in prayer, and we were just, and sometimes we talk about different things in the Bible, we talked about Eve. And I said, wow, you know, Eve, Adam called Eve the mother of all creation. That was who Eve was, the mother of all creation, right? So let's, let's kind of put this in perspective. And I'm not going to be long, right? And, and I'm not going to say, take your Bible out, we're going to read scriptures, because I'm going to leave it to you to read it, right? If you want to familiarize yourself with it, then, you know, you should, right? But I'm just going to give you like an overview of, of this story, right? And how we apply it to ourselves. So Eve, the mother of creation. 
And, and I want you to get that in your mind right now, because I want you to know who Eve was, right? The mother of creation, right? We all know what mothers are, nurturers, right? Caregivers, the ones that always make the sacrifice, right, Ariane? Always sacrificing. And this is Eve, the mother of creation. So here's Eve, the mother of creation, and Eve has a fall. And I'm going to talk about the fall, right? I'm going to talk about the rise. So first we're going to talk about the rise of Eve. Then we're going to talk about the fall. And then we're going to talk about Eve's resiliency. So what was the fall? What was the rise of Eve, right? So Eve, Eve was, um, you know, God kind of put Adam to sleep and took a part of his rib and he created Eve as Adam's help me, right? So there's Eve. And then Adam said, this is now bone of my bones. He said Eve, right? And the flesh of my flesh and Eve shall be <clears throat> called, right? Because she um, was taken from man, that she is called woman, right? right. Then, he, then it says, therefore, man shall leave his father and his mother, and he shall cleave unto his wife, and he shall be, they shall be one flesh, and that's Adam and Eve, right? That's the rise of Eve, right? Can we, can we see where Eve was created by God, right? Adam calls her, right, bone of my bone, that we are one, we are one flesh, right? The mother of all creation. This was an important woman. She was, she was an important woman, right? So let's, let's see where she's at, right? Then all of a sudden, right, Eve is just minding her business in the garden, like many of us, right? Many of us, you know, some single parents, head of households, we ain't trying to get into nothing. We're just minding our business in the garden. Every now and then we might kind of visit the social media site, maybe the data app or something, right? But we're just minding our business, right? And then comes the serpent. Then comes the serpent. And he subdues her, right? And they say that he's, 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 he's more smarter, he's more intelligent than any other beast in the field. Right? And, and he's cunning, he's crafty, he's deceitful, and he's a schemer. And he says to Eve, you know, has God said you shouldn't eat from that, that tree? Right? And I believe Eve's biggest mistake, because I'm going to tell all y'all, <laughs> that some things don't require a response. Sometimes you just need to walk away and not respond. But Eve, in her kindness, because, you know, he, he might have been good looking. I'm telling you. I mean, until, until God cursed him and he was slivering on the ground, I, don't, I think he was standing upright. You know what I mean? And he might have been a little good looking, right? Because I don't think it just took one little encounter for Eve to kind of fall for him. He probably was like, doing this over time, right, Deb? Like, it, it took a little time for him to, like, entice her, right? And, and so she then says, the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the tree in the garden, but the fruit of the tree in the midst of the garden, God said, we should not eat it, neither shall we touch it, unless ye shall die. So God was, like, very clear, like, you know, don't eat it, don't touch it, don't even look at it, right? Don't even get caught up in it. Just eat everything else around it, but don't even look at it. And then the serpent, right? That's what I'm telling you. Sometimes you just don't even need to have a conversation with people because you're opening the door, right? And then he says, you know, you're not going to die. You're not going to die. You're going to be like God. You're going to have all this wisdom. You're going to have all this charisma. You're going to have knowledge. And Eve, you know, because he had seduced her at this point, right? 
So she was believing everything he says. You know, I mean, come on now. How many sisters know what I'm talking about? Don't be shy. Don't be shy. We're not going to get shy up in this room. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You know it's not good for you, but... <laughs> we don't just try it for a minute, you know? And then Eve... 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 Took it a little further. Because not only did she eat it, but then she gives it to Adam. She gives it to Adam. And, you know, I'm not going to even get into it because there might be some Bible scholars in this room and I might be messing up. But I'm just saying, like, you know, Adam, you didn't know what it looked like? You didn't know what you was eating? Poor Eve, right? I mean, we, we daughters of Eve, so we have some questions about why we was taught that Eve was the cause of them getting kicked out of the garden. We just have a few questions, right? Just a few, right? But, you know, Eve did give it to Adam, and he ate it. And that was the fall of Eve. That was her fall, right? That was her fall. Because at that point, you know, God, God knew that this, this serpent was just not after Eve, right? He was after something bigger than that. He was after her because Eve could reproduce, right? Remember God wanted them to be fruitful, that he wanted her to reproduce, right? Adam couldn't. He needed Eve, right? And so the serpent wasn't just going to like trick her. There was a reason why he didn't go after Adam. He went after Eve. And so, and so the, the serpent was after Eve, not just because, you know, he wanted to trick her, but he, he wanted to create this confusion in the relationship with her, God, and Adam. And I don't believe he was done. And the reason why I don't believe he was done, because God said, I'm going to create this into me between you and the serpent. Because I'm going to create this, this, this tension in that relationship. Because just in case, after all this is done, he shows up and says, I told you about him, and I told you about him. But me and you, we can get together now, because you see what they did to you? God said, no, 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 no. I'm going to cause this problem that you and him will never get together. You will always be enemies, right? Why else would God need to do that? Because he knew what the serpent would do, right? You ever had somebody in your life that, you know, you thought it was over, and you got over him, and then he just circles right back, and you're like, man, I thought that was done. <laughs> Come on, talk to me, sisters. Let's not be shy in this room. It's Mother's Day. We got a few men in here, but we just gonna talk about the real deal, right? It's the truth, right? Eve gave us a, a road map. She showed us some stuff, right? Because God said, no, you ain't coming back. I'm going to make sure that her birth may be painful, but every time she does it, she's going to bruise your head. Every time she gives birth, you're going to feel the pain because she's bringing forth hope into this world that's filled with darkness, right? So that was Eve. So let's, let's think about it a little bit more. Because I want you to understand what happened to Eve, right? So here's Eve standing in the garden, and all three of them are there. All three are there. And Eve is Eve's the one, right, that, that kind of took the apple and shared it with Adam. So the serpent's there. He's the one that tricked her, right? And then Adam's there when God said, what happened, Adam? He said, it was her. She, she's the one that gave me that apple, that woman you brought me. She messed me up. And then God turns to Eve and he says, what did you do? What did you do? And Eve said, the, the serpent, he, he enticed me. You know, he seduced me. He did these things to me. And poor Eve is standing there naked. 
And the three are just there. Adam was supposed to protect her, right? Right, he was supposed to protect her. He said, bone of my bone, that we would be one, right? Anybody ever told you that before? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Eve, Eve was the mother of all creation, and she was telling us something in this story, ladies. So, you know, so Eve, there's Eve, the mother of all creation, right? She's standing there. But Eve was resilient. It didn't stop there. The story didn't stop there, right? So Eve knew that, that her pain would be Ten times over. I mean, when I think when God says something is painful, it's really painful, right? He told her it's going to be painful when you give birth, right? He told her that, that, you know, every time you give birth, it's going to be painful. But that didn't stop Eve. Because Eve gave birth to Cain and Abel. She gave birth to two sons, Right? Even though she knew it would be painful, but her desire to fulfill her purpose was greater than that pain. And Eve gave birth. And even when one of them murdered the other, even when one took the other's life. And, and you know, a mother would tell you that I lost both sons, right? One took a life, the other, you know, is gone, but it feels like I lost them both. But that still didn't stop Eve. Because Eve asked God for another seed. She said, you know, can, can you give me another seed? And she was so grateful that she gave birth to Seth. Right? So I wanted to show you that, you know, we have this example that lives in this book. And it's one of many books that I share. But I think the Bible is, 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 is a bestseller. And there's so many different stories in there. And when we think about Mother's Day, and we think about ourselves, and we think about things that we've gone through similar to Eve, right? We probably felt abandoned by somebody who was supposed to protect us. We probably felt like we, we wanted to, um, to have somebody there. But he wasn't, right? She wasn't. But we were still resilient. And we still went forward, although it was painful. So I wanted to just share that with you and say that, you know, Eve, the mother of all creation, you know, and, and her, she was on top, you know, she fell, but she got back up. Right, right. She got back up, just like us, just like us. She got back up, right? And, and just like us, you know, some people, some of y'all might call like what the serpent did like catfishing. Right? There's different words for it. But, you know, but whatever he did, he did it. Right? And, and, and Adam wasn't there for her. So I wanted to, um, and I wanted to share this um, reflection with you, but I don't even know if I have it, because um, I, I didn't bring the book. But if I find it, I will share it with you. Um, but, um, but I did write this reflection about um, a letter to Adam, dear Adam. And um, if I do find it, that I will share it with you. But I will just leave you with that, with those things to think about, and um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Y'all can do better than that.